such my brothers and sisters is the metal, the composition, the steadfastness of spiritual virgins. As God prepares for his second coming, can he see Mary in you? The second thing I, I realized about Mary, I quickly came across to this. Let's go in Luke chapter 1, real quickly. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto him and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Watch this, sir. And the Bible says, When she saw him, she was what? Troubled at this sign. And she says, what, why is he talking to me like this? Why is he greeting me like this? What manner of salutation is this? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast what? Find favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. We want to go right down to verse 34. And then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I am not yet I have not yet known a man. And the angel said unto her, read with me, that the, the, that what the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall come overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born in thee shall be called what? The Son of God. The angel explains the incarnation. And this is what Mary's response is. In verse 38 of Luke chapter 1, Mary says what? Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy will. Use me as you want to use me. Uh, the, 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 the second characteristic of Mary, of why God chose Mary, is that Mary was willing to be used by God. Oh, yeah. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. I, I'm reminded of a young prophet, Isaiah. Who saw the chaos and the carnage that uh, was rampant throughout Israel. In fact, the Bible says it's in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And then God and him had a conversation right there. And the Bible says that I heard a voice saying, whom shall I send and who will go up for us? And Isaiah said, here my Lord, well, why can't you use me? You got to be willing to be used by God. I'm reminded of a young man named David. The Bible says that the armies of the Philistines was arrayed against God's people in the valley. And this big mouth looked back Goliath, think he could call God all kinds of names, and everybody was running back. But a little boy named David says, the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. And if God will use me today, I'm going to feast your, I'm going to feed your body to the birds. Use me, Lord. Reminded of a young queen by the name of Hadassah. You know her by Esther. A more common acquaintance. Who despite the threat that was to her own people. In preparation uh, to go to the king. Esther said I don't care if I perish. Let me perish. If I die let me die. Don't matter what happened to me. I'm going to see the king. So in preparation for God's second coming. As he prepared for his first coming. God is looking for unbridled willingness to do his work. Amen. He's what? He's looking for unbridled willingness to do his work. You got to be willing to work for God. Yes. So what if, have mercy Lord Jesus. I don't get in trouble now you know that James. What if choir practice it on Tuesday night? Give up the Tuesday night time. Don't watch your shows on Tuesday night. <laughs> Don't work on Tuesday night. Go to choir practice. You got to be willing to be used by God. When the nominating committee call your name, you said, you know, that the Holy Spirit is in there, directing them. And then they call your name to be something and you say, no, not me. When you just said no to the Holy Spirit, 
Because the Holy Spirit is in there with them. And through them, the Holy Spirit called your name. And the pastor, the head elder, called you and you said no. You're telling not to the pastor who was sent by the nominating committee who was sent by God. You gotta be willing to be used. And when Mary looked at everything that was gonna happen to her, Mary says, you know what? Use me as you would. Whatever you say gonna happen to me, let it happen to me. Let it happen to me just like that. You gotta be used by God. Choosing Mary. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 39. And when she saw him, sorry, verse 39, and Mary arose in those days. And she what? She went into the what? The hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And she entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And she, she's right there now, saluting and talking to Elizabeth. And verse 45 says, and blessed is she that what? That what? Blessed is she that what? Believe. God is looking for a few persons who will just believe. You have to be virgins. You can't mix with the world. The things of the world are enmity to God. If there is a crowd, God is not in it. Because straight is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. I want you to know that. The things of the world are enmity with the world. You gotta be a virgin. You have to be willing to be used by God. You have to say, God, your agenda is my agenda. Don't tell God your plan and ask him to bless it. God's the norm. Lord, what is your will? And so if you ask him for God's will and he tell you your will, his will, and you make it your will, every time you pray, it's gonna happen. Right? Because you're only praying for God's will. It doesn't mean that you're not ambitious and you're not uh, uh, thinking. And, and, no, 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 no. But your priorities have to be in order. And then the Bible says Mary was used because she was what? Willing to believe. God is able, folks. God is able. The God who we serve is able. You know, when I met God, there was nothing around, you know. The Bible says, in the beginning, in the beginning, God created, the earth was void, it was empty, it was formless. Nothing was happening, nothing was happening. And God stood at the intersection of time and eternity. And God opened his mouth and said, let there be light. And all of a sudden, light happened. There was nothing there. And he says, let the water separate, and the water separated. And let dry, dry ground appear, and it happened just so. This is the God who we serve. He's able to make things happen. Psalm 33 and verse 6 says, let all the inhabitants of the earth fear him, because he spake and it was done, he commanded, and it stood fast. You have to believe God. You have to believe him. Or else it doesn't make any sense being here. You have to believe what God says. God's going to come through for you folks. He's it. The only thing that Christians have is a statement of a promise that a God loves you so much that he gave his son so that whosoever believe that's all we have you know all we have is a promise but he who said faithful is he that promised you gotta believe God Jesus touched a lot of people and they were healed.
believe. And this woman said in her heart, I believe. Amen. Oh, if he touched me, I'm going to be okay. But I believe if I touch him, never happened before. But I believe if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be whole. Zacchaeus, shut up. But he may have to be quiet. Nobody wants to see you. You are born blind. Your father was blind. You're poor. You were born that way. Don't even pray about that. That's your cross, spirit. Don't let nobody ever tell you that. You know, folks tell you that's your cross, spirit. They lie. Zacchaeus was like, uh, Bartimaeus was born with a cross. He was born blind. He was the son of a poor blind beggar. And the next installation in the Timaeus family would only be a poor blind beggar. But he believed. He said, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And the next time we see Zacchaeus, he's not blind anymore. He's not poor. He's not begging. And if Zacchaeus, if Bartimaeus was to have a son, he's going to see. Amen. You got to believe. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, sorry, Abednego, why are you going down there in the fiery furnace? Where you going? Where we believe. Who tell you that? He said, my toes told me that. I said, well, how do toes tell you that? He said, when well, you see the toes are about meeting you. Because every time you stand up, who feels the weight? Your toes feel the weight. I said, the toes are about meeting. One day in the plains of Jura, and they made the, 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 the little toe put a motion forward. He says, I move that we don't bow down because we believe that God is able to save us. Amen. And the big toe seconded the motion, and the other big toe who was the chairman of the board, he says, all in favor, and all the toes say aye. aye. And so the toes made a decision not to bow down because God was able. Amen. And then the decision left the toes and it's the ankle. And the ankle said, well, if the toes not bowing down, we're not bowing down. And the shin says, well, if the ankle not bowing down, and the toes not bowing down, we're not bowing down. And the knee says, well, if the shin not bowing, and the ankle not bowing, and the toes not bowing, we're not bowing. And the tie bone says, well, if the knee not bowing, and the shin not bowing, and the ankle not bowing, and the toes not bowing, we're not bowing. And the waist says, well, if nobody down below bowing, we're not bowing. And the backbone says, well, if the waist not bowing, and the tie not bowing, and the knee and the shin, and the, and the ankle and the toes not bowing, down. and the Bible says that that decision, which was made in the, in the board meeting of the toes, reach all the way up into the skull and in the cranial cavity of the skull bone. That is where your brain is housed. The Bible says that the brain sent a message down to the mouth and the mouth just opened and gave the decision that was formed down in the toe and said, listen, if the toes not bowing, the ankle not bowing, the shin didn't need it, the tie, the waist, the back, the, nobody bowing, we are not going to bow down because we believe God. You got to believe, folks. All of you have to believe. All of you have to believe. Mary was willing to believe. We're back in Luke chapter 1, verse 46. You got to be willing. Have mercy, Lord. You got to be willing to worship. You got to be willing to what? To worship. Let's read it. Don't take my word for it. I uh, started up verse 46 in Luke chapter 1. And Mary said, My soul. My soul. Oh, she started a little dance. She went to the left. Then she went back to the right. She said, My soul. To magnify the Lord. She said, Look what Jesus did when he washed me. And she started a little praise. She spread her arms wide. She lifted her eyes towards heaven. She did the little world. She says, My soul magnifies the Lord. She says, A peaceful not in the week. And when you see me step up in church on Sabbath, don't wash the face. I'm just worshiping God. Because deep down in the depths of my soul, I'm willing to worship God. My soul to magnify the Lord. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul, oh, deep down, my grandmother said, is right down inside here. Like, oh, it's bubbling in my soul. Oh, I'm singing, I'm shouting. So, oh, some people don't understand it. They come to your amens in church. And while they come to their amens, their blessings slip in them. That's right. 
Gotta be willing to worship. Can't come to church with no sad face and leave with the same sad face. You leave it the same. Worship. Mary says, My soul is here to magnify the Lord. Have mercy. For he is, verse 49, for he is mighty. He has done to me great things. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from what? Generation unto generation. Oh, she started singing. She said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for he is gracious. Never shall his promise fail. God has made his saints victorious. Sin and death shall not prevail. Praise the God of all salvation. Host and high his power proclaim. Heaven and earth and all creation. Lord and magnify his name. Mary says I'm telling you. That when I think of how God wants to use me. I'm just, I'm just happy. Amen. Yes. Look at me. That God would use me. A prodigal son from the backside of their bed. But God would use me. I'm happy and I'm worshiping God. Because it's God is for us. Think about that. Who in God's earth have mercy? When I leave church, Jones, I just want somebody to pick on me. You know? In Jesus' name. Because if God is for me, what can man do to me? Let them become me. Hmm? Yes. We, 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 we don't really believe this kind of God that we serve. Let's move real quickly. Last quality. Mary was a virgin. We said that. She was willing to believe. She really was willing to believe. She was ready to be used by God. She said, Lord, whatever you say, I'm going to do. Work it out. You know, Mary never worked out when she got pregnant. She never worked out when she going to visit the, 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 the pediatrician and the gynecologist. She never really worked out which vitamin she going to take. God did all that. She told the angel, be it unto me, just the way you said. Make my schedule and I'm going to do it. Amen. Willing to be used. Folks, if God would just make your schedule for the day, at the end of the day, you're really victorious, you know. Yes. Come on. This is God, you know. Let me see the hand of all those in here who want to or have a small business. If you want to start a business or you have a small business. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Let me see the hands of those inside here who know at least 10,000 people. And I'm not talking about the people you have on Facebook who you really don't know as a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. No. If you really know 10,000 people. Okay. You, you, you want to tell you how to advertise your business? Give God your time. And then tell God, Lord, I'm giving you your time. I'm giving you my time. So I'm not working my business. I'm giving you my priority time. So you work you, my business for me. How much people do you think God knows? Does God have to print a flyer? God can exercise his own eternal prerogative and get into Sister Carty's dream and tell Sister Carty, call Poxon tomorrow to give him a job. And she ain't seen a flyer yet. And she ain't seen my business card yet. Give God your time. Oh, yes. Let him work for you. Listen, when God enters your dream, ask that you can You can't even shut God out. When God decides to disturb you, ask Jonah. He's going to cause a storm. He's going to treat and the people going to be afraid. Thank you, you can't stop God reaching you, you know. No, ask for Saul, on his high horse, riding to Damascus, letters in his hand, thinking he's doing God's job. Not him out. For, for, for this, God can exercise his eternal prerogative and reach you. And you can't do nothing about it. So let, let that work for you. We don't understand the kind of God we serve. Lastly, 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 Mary was willing to sacrifice. Yes. Sacrifice, yes she did. She was ready and willing 
to go the distance. Mary was a young girl, 17 years old, looking pretty. She had a lot of options. Joseph, with a, 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 a carpenter, had his own little business. Most ladies want to marry with their own little business. They, they little pick up truck doing construction. <laughs> yes. Come on, am I talking the truth? Who, who, who lock his own door and open his own door? He look at one to nobody, he's the boss. Joseph was the boss, you know. And she is now looking for a good life with Joseph. But this angel come and tell her she's pregnant. All that gone. Joseph ain't gonna want to marry me now. But I'm willing, Lord, to sacrifice. My own reputation. I, I, I can't go to the well in the morning with the rest women because I'm a scandal now. So I have to go in the middle of the day. But that's okay. I'm willing to do that because I'm doing it for Jesus. Nine months bearing a child that she knew was not hers. No, I didn't say that Joseph knew it was not his you know. Mary's child was not hers. Mary did you know? Thank you, Machina, that your baby boy don't really belong to you. Wow, you just a sorry get mother for God. Wow. That God would use you and just rack your own body and put stretch marks on you and you still yes, yes, God, I'm willing to sacrifice that. She was willing to sacrifice. And God used her. The indignity of having to deliver her first child in a stable. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. She said, Lord, I'll do it. A long donkey ride. All the way from Nazareth into Bethlehem. She said, Lord, I'm going to do it. Willing to sacrifice her, her own, uh, in her mind she knew that she could not really have this child to see him uh, uh, killed on Mount Calvary. Her own son stripped of all his dignity, declared a blasphemer, common criminal, to watch himself, give himself for the entire world. Yet with patient endurance of a child of God, she bore it. God is looking for sacrifice this morning. Amen. Bible says we must present our own bodies to God as living sacrifices. Holy, that's in virgin status. Amen? Amen. Accept to God. He said, that's just your reason of the service. You ain't really start doing nothing yet, you know. When you present yourself as a living sacrifice to God, that's just your reasonable service. That's just what, that's just a natural thing to do. What should I render to all the Lord for all his benefits? He's taken care of me so well. He healed my diseases. He took care of my sins. He cast them into the depths of the sea. He doesn't deal with me as, I, as my sin. He doesn't call my transgression against me. As far as the east is from the west, so far God has removed my sins from me. And I'll tell you the truth, my sins are dark and they're many. But when I see what God has done for me, I'm just willing to what? To sacrifice. God is looking for a few Marys this morning. When in the 21st century, we expect God to come. It's not so much about his first coming, but it's more about his second coming. The babe that was born in a manger is coming again. The victory that was sealed on Calvary is nearing a magnificent climax. I love what Paul says. He says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. That word shall again. It's the most powerful imperative of the English language. He says, because the Lord himself. God's not going to send some emissary. 
God's not going to send some ambassador to the United Nations. The Lord himself. The Bible says that a heaven would be empty for the space of a half hour because the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God and the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall. I love the word shall. Folks, God is responsible for the shout. Let him work it out. Yes. Just present yourself as a man. Amen. With your spiritual virginity intact. Your willingness to believe. Your willingness to be used. Your willingness to worship. Give God his due. Give God his due. Pay your tithe and your offering. Pay your tithe and your offering. You worship God with tithes and offering, you know. Because when you do that, you're claiming creator and you are just a steward. And then be willing to sacrifice. And I believe, my friends, that if we do that, that the same God who could incarnate himself in a virgin from Nazareth, it is the same God who can use you and I. And not bringing his first coming, but ushering his second coming. And the Bible said thousands of thousands and ten thousand and ten thousand of angels would just fill the sky. Jesus himself would come riding down the cloud of the sky. We'll be able to look up and say, this is our God. Hallelujah. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is our God. The Bible says he'll write his name on his forehead. God will be with us forever. Lord. Not just for 33 and a half years down here, but forever. Hallelujah. Never dying. Forever. Hallelujah. No sickness. Forever. Amen. Did a funeral in Nevis just the other day? Mother and a little baby in the casket together. That's not going to happen in heaven. But it starts down here. If God can't use you down here, He can't plan for you in heaven. There's no reward in heaven if you're not used. No. We learned this morning in our school that God doesn't save by proximity. God doesn't save by association or affiliation. God saves you because he knows you. Give your heart to God first. Give him your spiritual virginity. Give him your time, sacrifice. And watch God use you. Amen? Amen? I hope this morning that someone was, was blessed. Amen. That God has spoken to you in a language that only you can understand. And only you can appreciate. Amen. I declare to God that as you move forward in the year Amen. 2016. That if you present yourself as a Mary to be used by God. Look what wonderful that thing that God can do for you. I, I'm just impressed. You just by a show of hands. Is anyone here this morning who wants to say preacher? I want to be Mary. I want to be used by God in some mighty way in this coming year. Just raise your hand. Yes. Praise the Lord. God sees. God sees those. And God bless you. And we look forward to having a bumper year in Jesus. Amen. When together we can bring in his second coming. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Such a message for such a time. Amen. Our closing hymn will be hymn number 647. My eyes have seen the glory. Hymn number 647.
morning, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the message this morning, dear Lord. And as we digest it in our minds and our lifestyle, dear Lord, may we nourish it to our soul and our personal development. May we step forward as Mary, dear Lord, forever willing, dear Lord, to face the consequences of serving you. Please continue to be with us for the remainder of this day. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 This is Mrs. Lord. Thank you. 